Well, I guess people call me a creative producer. Um, and I guess the creative part of that is, well, I think everything you do as a producer is actually creative because every decision you make has a creative impact. As a producer, your job is to keep steering the ship so that you don't go up, you know, expensive dark alleys that aren't going to make a big difference to whether the film is good or great. Um, but uh, in a way, I see my job as a producer to provide the whole support system that they can push right out into the dark and do the most exciting things that they never expected to be able to do. He um, was the most experienced person I'd ever worked with and I learned so much from Vincent. He's, um, he was so not what I expected as somebody to work with. He trusts his creative collaborators um, he knows what he wants and he's got great ideas but he really works with people, the people he um, is working with technically and creatively, um, he will push them, that's his job, but he also trusts them and I haven't met too many people um, who really don't love that process. He is incredibly hardworking, well organised and original and creative in the way he approaches his work. Um, with Two Cars One Night, I think Ainsley and I definitely um, wanted to put around him the kind of experience that would allow him to really try out things. Um, but we wanted him, his actors to be really well rehearsed, so Nancy Brunning and Lauren Taylor worked a lot with the um, young actors, which means that, you know, he was, he's great with actors, but he also had support. Um, you know, Adam, cinematography was beautiful. Um, we also had other experienced people around him, and I guess that's what I would, what I often um, aim to do, is that with somebody new, you want to surround them with generous, creative um, experience. I guess the thing that I really loved is that he was so film literate. He knows world cinema, he knows his own culture, but he knows everybody else's culture as well. I think that's one of the things we undervalue in New Zealand, is that a lot of um, Māori and Pacific Highlanders have the same education as um, us Pākehā, uh, so introduced to the knowledge of the Western world, the knowledge of the rest of the world, but actually what they also bring is the knowledge of their world, which gives a unique advantage of um, bringing together many more um, uh, ways of seeing the world and um, the depth of culture. And certainly one of the things that's interesting internationally is Tussi is truly being watched for what he will do next. And in fact, you know, it's gratifying to the support we have around the world for keeping going even in an environment where that kind of work is quite alien. I think it's a film that's almost a little before its time. Um, it will it bears a lot of study, you know, in terms of unpeeling onions, um, you can study it like Shakespeare. Uh, and you know, it's frustrating to have people say, I don't think I got everything, and you go, well did you get everything the first time you saw Macbeth? No. Uh, and I think we've got very used to aiming to make things that are very accessible and easy, but certainly films you don't want to see twice. The A-list festivals are like the shop front of Harrods, really. Um, so if your film is in the shop front, then that is a good place to be. Uh, you will find many buyers who will only look at the shop front. Um, of course there are buyers who are prepared to ask somebody if they've got something back in the storeroom, um, but really um, getting into that shop front gives you opportunities 
and long-term opportunities. They're not necessarily immediate opportunities, but you get noticed. There's a funny idea in New Zealand that festivals are sort of arty and not commercial, and that you know people who get into festivals will that sort of places them in that kind of a film. Well, that kind of a film in the international section is the only kind of film that really gets sold in any meaningful kind of way. And it is also about the world understanding and tracking talent. So it won't necessarily be this particular film. Um, from I would say that on, it would take to the fourth film for a film to be truly able to break even or really seriously return some money, um, which is why almost every single country in the world subsidises its film industry in order to um, you know, mitigate the colonising influence of um, the power of Hollywood. Ironically, the power of the state funding agencies subsidising our industry actually affects it in a way that commerce wouldn't. I mean, when you look at like a film like Three Wise Cousins, they got out there, they met an audience need and they made it for nothing. They had no scrutiny on their script or their approach or anything. Um, they went out there and did it. Um, if things are going to change, I think it needs visionary people um, who are prepared to address their um, unconscious biases in the state agencies. But equally, um, I, I've been working with a project on uh, Don Selwyn lately, and really what's interesting is for Māori, you can track, and Don was very much part of this whole tracking, which is from invisibility, it was participating actually being seen, making sure you were seen, asking, you're standing up, protesting, and saying, we need to have a place here, and then taking control. And that's the bit where, um, you know, you have to be prepared to step up um, and, and be prepared to fail, but step up and try.